<laughs> oh, well, you'll be able to improvise. Okay. Peter Tazelar, how are you, brother? Tazelar, I'm, I'm doing. Uh, I'm doing very well. Yeah. Now, now explain. You uh, you went into today in first place here at the Melvis U.S. Nationals, the first ever event. You chartered a boat. You brought Willem and uh, and Mark Coxon. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, Michael Coxon, sorry. Yeah. Um, and uh, and you were going in today winning. What happened? Um, well, actually, what happened, you know, is what I feared what would happen, you know, sort of uh, looking at the race committee, what they did yesterday. Uh, yesterday we had a, you know, a good sort of 23 knot breeze and, uh, you know, they tried to get a lot of races in, but they sent us in at about one o'clock, you know, uh, which I was sort of surprised by. Uh, but anyway, so it all came down to uh, this morning and this morning we went out, there were like two, three knots of breeze, uh, 50 degree wind shift. Uh, we, uh, you know, we saw a good, good, good right hand shift, uh, won the boat end, uh, and sort of, you know, after, you know, five minutes after the start, uh, the wind died and we started going backwards. <laughs> uh, so we were sitting in a hole and <laughs> we were sort of looking at the, at the starting boat and said, Willem, you know, Kako, that's, that's his nickname, you know, Michael. You know, we're going backwards, guys. This is not good. <laughs> <laughs> so we went from first place in the race to suddenly to last place. Then we switched back to the middle. You know, we made a little bit up. Uh, but uh, it was only uh, a two-legged race. And, uh, you know. And not a lot of, I mean, not, not the whole fleet finished either. Uh, not the whole fleet finished. We couldn't even uh, fly the spinnaker downwind because there was not enough wind. So I said, guys, you know, take the chute down. You know, better have no chute than a flapping chute. And uh, yeah, there was about one knot of current running, so I said, "Let's let's start aiming aiming for the finish line because you know if we miss it on either side, we'll never be able to get back." Right, right. So I was sort of you know halfway down the run, we were like shooting for the finish, and uh, yeah, it, it was just a crapshoot. So me, meanwhile, a few a few boats protested that it was run under class limits. Uh, well, what, I what I, prote I protested. You know, I protested. I think two other boats protested. Uh, you know, basically, uh, you know, that there was not, the, the class rules say that there has to be consistently, you know, four knots are above mm -hmm. before you can sail. Yeah. And uh, there definitely wasn't. But, you know, the jury has uh, ruled against that. You know, they clearly disagreed. Uh, I don't understand why. Uh, probably local politics or whatever, but uh, you know, <laughs> my conclusion is uh, it's sort of an old man's boat, and you know, it's fun, but you know, it's well, and my, it's, and it's probably it's my last race in this boat. All right, well, and you know, I mean, and, and it's sort of, uh, it's gotten some of the former Melgus 24 owners who've, you know, it's been the 24 has been maybe too physical, or and maybe it is a bit of an old man old man's boat, and, and I mean, maybe the first sport boat really, really that's been designed and marketed. As an old man, old man's boat. Yeah, I, I, w I would say so, and and you know, I, I don't. Uh, I'm sort of happy I didn't win the event because I don't want to be categorized <laughs> as an old man. <laughs> so look, particularly, uh, particularly going into the Melges uh, 32 worlds, you know. Well, it's, uh, let's back out for a second. Now. <laughs> Being an old man's boat, still yesterday you had 20 plus knots of wind. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, the boat's got to be a blast in that stuff. No, it's a blast, but you know, 25 knots. I mean, the day before, you know, we went out in 30 knots and. We had it completely under control. Yeah. So, you know, it's about to be sailed in. So you maybe know. it can be handled more than the, than the class thinks it can be handled in. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's, 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 a, there's a bunch of problems with the rudder that, that the Harry Melters will fix. And, you know, so I think for, you know, there's a market for it for either old people or people that want to sail with the kids and, you know, do sort of the casual weekend racing. Uh, but if you take sailing a bit more professionally, I think. Uh, well, and now, and now, well, now we'll now we'll shift gears. Now you have taken the Melgus 32 class by storm a little bit. You know, you've uh, yeah. you came in with the Blixen program with Jeremy Wilmot, a Morning Light alum, his brother Nathan. In some events, right. you shipped the boat over to Europe and, and sailed in the hugely competitive European fleet there. Talk to talk to me about that fleet. Well, that's uh, it's all different ball game, right? I mean, uh, you know, if, if like, like here on the 20. Uh, Melvis 20, you know, there's huge room to start and, you know, have a clean start, clear clear lane. Uh, the 32 fleet is uh, is highly professional, uh, very aggressive. Um, you know, we uh, we did well in uh, in Miami. Uh, then we decided, okay, you know, where's going to be the most competition? Uh, that was clearly going to be in Italy, right? These guys mm -hmm. take the sport very professionally. Um, you know, I think they're very uh, welcoming. And uh, to uh, to foreigners, and uh, you know, on the race course they're very aggressive, but you know, you, you, you just deal with that. 
uh, but they're good sailors, you know, and they like sailing, and, and you just notice it. And uh, uh, it, it's a very deep fleet out there, you know, and it's yeah. becoming deeper in, here in, in the U.S. also. What you see is a lot of guys coming down from the far 40, right, bad economic times. You know, the, it's, it's a little it's cheaper a, to run 32. It's cheaper, and, yeah. still not cheap, but, you know, it's a little <laughs> cheaper. So, um, um, yeah, you know, it, it, it's, it's a great boat, and it handles, you know, I've sailed the 24 only one time, but it, it's similar to a 24. You right. know, you've got a high cart, you know, it planes downwind, and it's... Uh, a little it's more bit, comfortable upwind yeah. than a 24? Yeah, a bit, bit more comfortable. Yeah. So, Definitely so, for the driver. <laughs> well, let, let, let's talk about the level. You've got a crew uh, that blows people's minds, I think. Um, for the 32, you've got Bear Pete, you've got Willem Van Way, you've got Jeremy Wilmot, you've got his brother Nathan. Yes. Uh, some of the best sailors in the world. Right. Uh, how'd you arrive at, at, at this crew for for the upcoming Mogus 32 Worlds in Sardinia. I'm the weak link on the boat, right? Yeah. I mean, that's and that's the way it's supposed to be, I think, because yeah. it's an owner driver. Owner driver yeah, yeah, it's an owner driver rule, to you know. So, uh, but uh, I have to say, you know, we've, we've for the last four regattas, you know, all the guys you mentioned, uh, we've we've been with the same team and uh, we get along very well. Uh, the communication on the boat is is is, is excellent, you know. Uh, we 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 you know we uh, we work hard, we race hard, but you know, and, and after the racing, we party hard, and uh, there's a lot of bonding going on, and uh, you know, it, 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 we're having a good time. And and but once the race starts, you know, when we get into race mode, we're we're, we're more yeah, we're really really very aggressive, and uh, we want to win. I mean, that, that, that's it. And, well, and we we got all the talent on board, and. You know, I really uh, between Willem and uh, and Nathan and Jeremy, they've really uh, got me up the learning curve very steeply. You know, in terms of steering the boat. Yeah. Well, and so, that's what we've noticed. I mean, you went from a newbie really in the fleet, and we never really saw you on the sport boat circuit, and then you went to winning pretty quickly. So right. Obviously, right. You, you've been pushed up the curve hard. Right. As my wife pats me yeah. down. Uh, is it? Um, I knew that, but I, I think, and I think you noticed that yesterday also with the uh, with the Melders Twenty, right? Because you know there's a little bit of breeze, upwind. We just cruised by everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, I, it, it took me. I'd never sailed the Melders Twenty, but it took me like one day to get used to it. And then the last race, I think we were like, you know, ten minutes ahead of number two. So, really? Yeah. So uh, you know, well, there's a lot of opportunities to get ahead in a fleet where people are just figuring the boat out. It, you know, I mean, yeah. No one sailed this boat very much except for the Italians who came over and didn't do very well. No, but they, they dealt with the same kind of issues I dealt with, you know, not enough racing in and, you know, right. some breakage, so, right, right. you know, today was a random day, uh, completely random, so, So, sw know. switch gears for a second, we are, uh, we just found out that we're going to be doing our live on the water anarchy at the 32 Worlds in Porto Cervo. I love it, Should Fantastic. be pretty fun, everyone can watch along. Yeah. What can we expect? Who are the who are the teams to watch out for? We know uh, you're, we know you're a factor. Who else? Yeah, we are a factor. You know, the Italians say you know they keep saying we are the favorites, and I keep denying it because we really you know we're probably one of the favorites, but right. anything can happen, yeah. right? It's a, it's a 35 boat fleet. It's sailboat racing. Uh, we're going to do our best, and we got a good crew, and we're going to be well prepared. But you got Team 93. Uh, I think I rate them which very is, highly. Uh, which is Claudio Recchi. Yeah, Claudio Recchi. With Federico yeah, McKinnon. You got Uka Uka, uh -huh. right? With uh, Lorenzo. Yeah. Uh, I think I think actually they are the team to watch. You know, they're going to train on their own. Uh, I think Pinta is going to come back probably with uh, Kostecki on board. I would think. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Uh, is, you know there, is there, is there a uh, Mescalzoni, I'm sure, you know, we, we beat them. They were fifth in the last Audi race, but, you know, I'm sure as we speak here and I'm sailing the old man's boat, you know, they're <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're doing the hard work. So uh, I'm sure they, they are, yeah, they're, it's their local local waters, right? Yeah, so yeah, uh, exactly. Vincenzo knows it, you know, inside out there. So, yeah. uh, uh, so I, I would say there's about 10 boats. You know, in any of those well, ten. That's fabulous. Yeah, I mean, any that of those happen very often. Yeah, so. any of those ten. You know, and I, I expect about thirty-five boats. Any of those ten has, has the ability to win. Well, Peter, so. we, we will be there watching, and I thank you for your interview, and we are certainly look forward to partying with you and your team. And yeah, we will. You know, we'll buy a couple of drinks. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, brother. Appreciate okay. it.